Hey Team Bio, this screencast is an attempt to connect two things that we've been talking about that have been discrete um, together in one beautiful screencast. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so we've been talking about genetics. Oops. Mostly at the level of the individual. And we've also been talking about evolution at the level of the population. And today's screencast is supposed to be kind of a marriage between what's happening at the level of individuals and punnett squares and how can we use that to talk about what's happening at the level of the population and evolution of that population. So um, we are gonna explain uh, evolution in terms of the emergent science of genetics, um, but I wanna talk a little bit about uh, it's a common misconception among students that if we have heterozygous individuals, so we have A, little a, big A, crossed with little a, big A, we'll see a three to one ratio of offspring dominant to recessive in the offspring. Um, and so geneticists of the early 1900s assumed that populations would evolve towards similar ratios of phenotypes, and they were wrong. So I want to disconnect this idea of a three to one ratio at the level of the individual um, to a three to one ratio at the level of what's happening in the population, because this might not reflect the frequency of the big and little a alleles in the population. So we're going to do some math today to connect the frequency of alleles to the frequency of distributions of dominant and recessive phenotypes that we'll see across the population. Hopefully that will make a little bit more sense in a second. Okay, so there were two mathematicians, um, Gottfried Hardy and William Wilhelm Weinberg, um, that realized that the frequency of alleles in a population was independent of the alleles inheritance pattern from individual parents to offspring. And they had an idea that in an ideal breeding population that had the following properties, population size was infinite or very large, mating was random, and mating pairs showed no preference for one phenotype over the other, there was no mutation, no exchange within other, with other populations, no immigration or emigration, and there's no selection, um, all phenotypes have an equal chance of reproducing under these conditions, which we know these things are not true. These things are often violated. Um, but if this, these things are true, then we'd expect allele frequencies to remain statistically constant over time, which is a condition we call Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Um, okay, so I'm going to give you the mathematics of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium right now. P is equal to the frequency of the dominant allele. And Q is equal to the frequency Um, uh, it's going to be, the frequency is going to be a number, some number between 0 and 1. So the total number of alleles in the population add up to equal 1. So the frequency of P plus the frequency of Q is going to equal 1. Okay. And then we have another equation, which is P squared plus Q plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1, where P squared equals the frequency of homozygous dominant. individuals in the population 
to PQ equals the frequency of heterozygous and Q squared is equal to the frequency of homozygous recessive. And it maybe seems like I got this equation out of nowhere, but in reality, if you square both sides of this equation, this top equation, you get this equation down below. And also, if you construct a Punnett square, which I'll do right now, where, oops, where P and Q are my two alleles at the top. You see that this PP is equal to P squared. PQ plus PQ is equal to 2PQ and Q squared is just equal to this QQ. So basically this equation is just showing us um, this uh, compiled Punnett square. Um, okay, however, um, the way that, you can kind of think of Hardy-Weinberg equation like a weighted Punnett square, um, where when we're talking about an individual having making a cross, we make all the size of the boxes the same because the possibility that they pass on the P allele or the possibility that they pass on the Q allele is equally likely. Um, you're just as likely to get one allele from your parent as you are to get the other allele that they have from them. Um, uh, there's a 50-50 chance of inheriting any allele of any parent. However, within a population, the frequency of P and Q, oh, that's not the right size kind of box I want to make. Um, the frequency of P and Q might not initially be the same. And so we can construct the size of the Punnett square such that the size of the boxes represent the frequency of P and Q within the population. So in this case, if this is P and this is Q and this is P, and this is Q, we see oop, We see that the vast majority of alleles in the population um, are Q, and as a result, the vast majority of individuals in the population are Q squared. So this Punnett square that we've created right here is like if you added up all of the individuals within the population, which have, so if we took, oops, all the Punnett squares of all the individual matings within the population, we added them all together. So imagine this was a cross between two heterozygous individuals. So we saw This was a cross between homozygous recessive individuals and so was this. Now my Q's are starting to look more like G's. that. 
Okay, I know you're going to be mad about this, Mia, that I just copied and pasted a bunch of things. Okay, but if we took all these individual matings and we added them all together, we would see that it was equal to this giant weighted pun and square. Um, so for this reason, Hardy -Weinberg, uh, the Hardy-Weinberg equations can be useful to us to calculating the amount of the frequency of homozygous recessive, um, homozygous uh, <coughs> dominant, and heterozygous individuals within the population. Um, now, why would we want to do this? Well, our null hypothesis, or the hypothesis that Hardy and Weinberg are putting forward, is that we would expect <laughs> to see allele frequencies remain constant from generation one to generation two to generation three. As long as all of these conditions that I mentioned above are happening or true. Um, however, if we see that allele frequencies are changing from one generation to the next, then we know that the population is evolving with respect to the gene that we're looking at. And so we can go back to our list here and say, what is happening? Is our population size small? Is mating non-random? Is there some sort of sexual selection happening? Is there a mutation that's occurred in the population? Has there been exchange um, with other populations? Or is there selection for or against a particular phenotype? Um, so we can use our list in order to determine um, why we see evolution uh, occurring within our population. OK, so that's all. I will see you in class tomorrow. We're going to do a little simulation um, with using the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium.